Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and today I'm going to be going over how to use core tiles to do some different analysis. We're going to be looking at stacked bar chart and we're going to be doing these stacked bar charts with our core tile information that we covered in the previous video. And in the next one, I'm also going to look at using a scatter chart to look at performance ratings and quartiles. So if you go back, I'll link to the first two videos where I was talking about quartiles. We have um, how to calculate what quartile an employee falls into based on their, uh, sat their base salary and the salary range. And then we also have uh, calculating percentile rank which is very similar to something I did before, position and range. So position and range metric is also very similar. Really, it's the same thing as percentile rank. You're looking at where somebody ranks within their salary range. So for the first examples, we were using the sales quota commission template and we were calculating actually based on their total target compensation compared to their ranges, because these were sales employees, we were calculating the percent rank in which quartile they fell in. So it, if you need a refresher, you can go back to that, but basically somebody with percent rank or position in range between zero to 20, 5% or the 25th percentile is in quartile one. If you're at the 26th to 50th percentile, you're in quartile two, etc. So, so I've moved everything to a new blank file to go through this. Kind of illustrating here, each 25% increment is the quartile one, two, and three. So how do we get our data, which is this long list of employee information? I just added some more sample data so we'd have more for this. But if you have the employee pay, the grade, and then quartile, the percent, the percentile, percent rank, and performance rating, there's a lot of different analysis we can do. And so the difference between the bar charts, what we want to use the bar chart for and what we would want to use a scatter chart for is if you think about it, you can't, if you're going to use a scatter, you're looking at every data point of about 40 employees we have. So a scatter chart is going to plot each employee to see where they're at. So for that, we would want to look at their actual percentile, and we can assume that if their percentile or position and range is between these percentages, that's their quartile. If you want to just look at quartile alone and have a summary by quartile, you can't really use a scatter. If you want to just have, it would show everybody at one, everybody at two or three. So doing a count per quartile is going to work better with a bar chart. So with this example, we have each quartile on the bottom and we have the head count of how many employees are falling within the quartile. And then we also can break that out by showing how many per quartile per salary grade. So that's what I'm gonna be showing in this video is these two charts here. And also keep in mind that the percent rank, the reason to add in these grades, just keep in mind the percent rank or position and range is all relative to the salary range. So if you have different ranges, you know, you calculate it differently based on the range. This other chart, so the pay structure design template gives a great visual on the salary range and the dots are where the employees fall in or above or below the salary range. But if someone was at the median in each range, they would be at a different salary level, but they would have the same percentile um, position and range. So that's something to keep in mind why you may want to break it out and do different analysis per grade. So we will start from scratch. So we have this big a chunk of data and we want to do the stacked 
bar chart or the chart showing the head count per quartile. The first one's going to be pretty simple. We just have to summarize the data first to make our chart, you know, a lot easier to create. So we're going to be using count if formulas and I will also link to the if series where I go over in more detail how to use different if formulas count if sum if but also I'll just run through it really quick for now so we're going to be doing count if we would use count ifs if we had multiple criteria but we really only have one we are only looking at quartile we're not considering the salary grade yet so the range of cells we want to be counting is going to be in column B, the quartile. And we want to count everything that matches to what I have here, quartile 1. So you want to make sure everything's spelled the same as how you're, you're typing it here in your summary. Since I highlighted the whole column, I don't have to put in the absolute reference. It should as I scroll down, it'll, it'll update. So that'll give us our headcount per quartile. And then from there, it's just a simple insert bar chart. So we can go up here to recommended charts, clustered column. So that's just the basic way to do it. We could name this headcount, headcount by quartile. And I'm going to want to add in the label. So you just right click um, while you're clicking on a bar and add data labels, format data labels. So format data labels, and we can put these where we want. Let's do inside, inside end. That looks good. Close out. And then I also want to right click and change the font to white. So far, so good. So now I want to look at the grade also. How is How does this relate to the salary grade? So out of these six people in quartile one, what grade are they in? We can still have one bar and we can break out different colors for the different grades. So if we had three grades, A, B, and C, we want to see different colors to show us that what that total bar is comprised of. So for that, we're going to need to scroll down here and it's going to be easiest if it's in this format, which I had entered sample data, but I don't actually have the correct formula in here. So we're going to want the, so whatever you want in the bar, you want to list across and this stays the same because we still just want the four quartiles along the bottom. So I'm going to do a count ifs. So this time the count ifs, because we have multiple criteria, we want to count. So, so kind of similar to above, we are looking at quartile for the range. So I'm going to highlight all of column B and then the criteria quartile one. So that's the same. And now we're just adding the second criteria. We also want to make sure we're only counting people in grade A. So I'm going to highlight column D for the grade. And then now you might think we can just click this, but if you see, I have it typed out grade A here, but it's just A in the column. So it's not going to give us any counts because it has to match exactly. So I could either update these headers to just say A, B, and C, or I could just do a quotation and A if I tab over. Yeah. So I could just hard code that A in. I'll just have to update it for each column for B and C. So I'm going to click OK. And then I should be able to drag this down and that should work because I'm referencing the entire column. Now, if I drag this over, Excel is now wants to reference column C, column C and E, which are the wrong columns. We want B and D. So I could either put the, the dollar signs in, or if I just highlight the formula, control C, escape out, and then control V, it'll reference the right columns. And then all I have to update is instead of A, we want B. And then I would do the same. I'm just going to copy and paste. And then I want to update this to C 
for to count grade C. Okay, so now we have our counts per grade and quartile. It adds up to 40, which is the same as we have above, so we know we're not missing anybody. From here, I can highlight this data, insert chart. We're gonna do, let's see if it, uh, I don't want it looking like that. I don't want separate bars for each grade. I want the stacked column, which will have each quartile in one column. So that's gonna be the stacked chart, chart type. So from here, you'll see it looks a little bit different. We still just have the four columns, which is what we want. And now we have the grades that automatically gives each grade a different color. So I would still do the data labels. So chart design, data labels, center, inside end, data call out. I think I'm gonna do center. That way the zero and the two aren't overlapping. And that's how you do the bar chart with your count by quartile. And then I would just update the chart title Headcount by quartile and grade level. So you can do something similar with a performance rating. So that would be something else to look into next time. So I hope that helps bring out more of a visual for the formulas we covered on calculating quartiles. And stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be going over how to do the scatter graphs with your quartile information and how we can use this to, to do even more compensation analysis with quartiles. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And we also have some free resources here at Time Saving Templates. You can find those at timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources. We'll have a free compensation metrics cheat sheet, um, some other free templates, and also a free guide to get you started with Excel. So feel free to check that out and to see, to find any of the HR templates that we have, you can also go to timesavingtemplates.com and click on the shop and human resources section. And until next time, don't forget, I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using your Excel spreadsheets.